Hello and welcome to the Reef Talk Extra channel. Now I've been running Kalkwasser on my main tank for about a year now, but a month ago I switched over from saturated Kalkwasser in a container to a Kalkwasser stirrer. So today I'm going to tell you what a Kalkwasser stirrer is, I'm going to show you how I've got mine set up, and I'm going to show you the five things I do like about it and the five things I don't. Now this is not a sponsored video, I bought the Kalkwasser stirrer myself, so with that being said, let's get stuck in. First off then, what is a Kalkwasser stirrer? Well, a Kalkwasser stirrer solves the main problem of Kalkwasser in that it is a very weak solution, so you normally need a very large container as you have to dose relatively large amounts of it to your tank. For example, my normal two-part dosing solutions, I had about 70 milliliters per day to the tank to keep up with my alkalinity uptake. Whereas with Kalkwasser, I have to add three and a half liters of the stuff per day, and that means that I need an enormous container full of Kalkwasser to hold enough to tide me over long enough so I'm not topping it up every day. And a Kalkwasser stirrer takes advantage of the fact that no more than one and a half grams per liter of Kalkwasser powder will dissolve in water. Any excess powder you add over that amount will just settle out at the bottom. But what a Kalkwasser stirrer does is, it has a stir bar that continually turns the Kalkwasser powder around, and then you feed the Kalkwasser stirrer with fresh water right into the bottom, so it pushes saturated Kalkwasser out and doses it to your tank, and as the new fresh water goes into the Kalkwasser stirrer, it instantly mixes with the Kalkwasser powder and maintains full saturation of Kalkwasser within the cylinder. So that's what it is then, how have I got mine set up? Now you can either have a Kalkwasser stirrer in your sump or in your cabinet. I don't have an awful lot of space in the cabinet, so I've put it in my sump. I have a small bit of piping attached to the outlet with a 90 degree bend, because I want to reduce the amount of distance the Kalkwasser has to travel once it leaves the Kalkwasser stirrer, so it doesn't splash onto the side of my glass and make a bit of a mess. And because Kalkwasser doesn't mix very well in water straight away, I've added a power head right next to the stirrer to give it the best possible chance of dissolving into my water. I fill the Kalkwasser stirrer with fresh water, and then I pour an unspecified amount of Kalkwasser powder into the container. Now the amount you add doesn't really matter because only 1.5 grams per litre will dissolve, so all you really need to be worried about is having a decent amount of excess, so the stir bar will keep it dissolving as you feed it more fresh water. Now saturated Kalkwasser can lose potency over time, so most of the people I've seen running a Kalkwasser stirrer tend to add a small amount of new powder to the Kalkwasser stirrer anywhere between twice a week and once a fortnight. Setup is pretty easy and there's not much more to tell you about that, so now I'll tell you about the five things I do like and the five things I don't. The first thing I like is the build quality and design of this particular Kalkwasser stirrer. It feels like a really solid piece of kit, the acrylic is nice and thick, and it feels like it's really well put together. It looks a little bit industrial, but all of the components have a really quality feel, and it comes with a reliable Meanwell power supply. The stir bar also turns nice and slowly, which means it keeps the Kalkwasser saturated, but it doesn't risk pushing any of the Kalkwasser powder up and into your tank. And the freshwater inlet point where you feed it from your freshwater reservoir is right at the bottom of the unit, which means it will mix in with the Kalkwasser powder instantly and keep saturation at 100%. The second thing I like about it is that it is one less thing to top up. All I have to do with this is fill up my freshwater reservoir once a week, as I always do, and that feeds the Kalkwasser stirrer. Previously when I've been running Kalkwasser saturated in a container, I've had to fill up my auto top off every week, and I've had to make sure I mix up and fill the Kalkwasser container roughly once a month. And that segues on to the third thing I like about it, which is that I no longer forget when it runs out. With my old Kalkwasser container, it was out of sight, and I had to fill it up roughly every 25 days, and I would often forget to do so, which would mean it would stop dosing Kalkwasser, resulting in my pH and alkalinity dropping. But now I have one less container to fill, and all I have to do is fill up my freshwater reservoir, which feeds the Kalkwasser stirrer, and I've been doing that every week for years now anyway, so that's ingrained into my maintenance regime. The fourth thing I like about it is that I no longer get an encrusting buildup. With my previous setup when I dosed saturated Kalkwasser, it used to splash onto the side of the sump and build up this awful Kalkwasser crust. Whereas now I don't get that at all. Now that might be because I'm dripping the Kalkwasser right into the middle of the sump, rather than right on the edge on the glass, and it might be because I'm using a pump as well to make sure it stirs up, but either way I hated that crusty buildup, so it's great having a nice clean sump now. And the final thing I like about the Kalkwasser stirrer is the big one, space saving. Now there's not a lot to say on this point, I used to have a 100 litre container which was enormous, and now I only need a small Kalkwasser stirrer that holds about 2.5 litres of water, and it sits in my sump out of the way, so it doesn't take up space in my house. 
Those are the things I like about it then, what about the things I don't like? Well first off, this particular Calquas Astera has a 1 meter power cable. And that's a problem for me because the power socket I want to use is just over a meter away from the Calquas Astera. So that means I have to have a small extension and I would have loved it if they included maybe a 2 or 3 meter power cable to give a little bit of extra flexibility. The second thing I don't like is that it buzzes a little. Now when I set it up first out of the tank and I turn the stirrer on, I could hear a constant gentle low buzz, which I found really annoying. I have to say that now it's in my sump cabinet and in water, I don't ever hear it above any of my other equipment, so it's not really a problem. But loud equipment can be really annoying and for the price of this unit, I feel like it should be pretty much silent. The third thing I don't like is that there is no quick disconnect socket for the RODI inlet. When I want to take the unit out of my sump to give it a good clean, I have to disconnect the RODI feed tube, which on this Calquas Astera is simply a threaded inlet. Now I never like disconnecting flexible tube from threaded plumbing, especially after I have to do it several times because I feel like the seal is going to be less secure. Now it's probably never going to be an issue, but it would have been great to see something like a John Guest Quick Connect system used so I don't ever have to pull the dosing line off of the threaded connection. And the fourth thing I don't like is that it doesn't come with a probe. Now saturated Calquasa can lose pH potency over time and so if you have either a pH probe or a conductivity probe it will tell you when you need to top up a little bit more powder to push the potency back up. Whereas without that it's just guesswork and you have to do it as and when you feel is necessary. Now this is kind of a double-edged sword because a probe would add to the cost of the unit, you'd have to calibrate it regularly and you'd have to replace it maybe every six months or so, so it's probably just about a good thing that it isn't included, but at this price point it feels like a little bit of an omission. And that segues into the final thing I don't like about it, and that is the price. This Deltec KM500 cost me £430, which is an awful lot of money for effectively an acrylic tube, a small motor, and a stir bar. Now it is nicely put together, they use quality components and it saves a ton of space, so it is worth the money, but I feel like a price of around two to 300 pounds would be much fairer value for money. But overall, I do really like it and I think the pros massively outweigh the cons. The only real con on the list is the price and that's a matter for you to determine whether that's value for money. Now if you've got any questions, let me know in the comment section below and if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next time. And until then, happy reefing.